How do you teach your dog to release the item on command? So if he, how about that? We'll start from the beginning. Let's say we have the appropriate item we want the dog to have, uh, a ball or rope bone. The easiest way to convey this to somebody that's not done before is that you should have two items of equal value. So let's say we have uh, a nylon rope bone of 12 inches long and uh, an inch in diameter. You want two of them exactly the same. If you have a little bit of variation, then the dog may choose a favorite and therefore the item of equal value is not going to have the same pull we want it to have, not going to have equal pull. Let's say we have uh, two balls. We have a big spongy ball and a little tennis ball. And the dog may choose a favorite. We want two identical items, equal value. And so I toss the rope bone to the dog or the ball and he's playing with it. And he likes it, he wants to keep it. Now, before I tell him to drop it, I show him I have another one just like the one you're playing with. And I'm playing with this one. And it's, he's curious, he's interested, and I can offer it at a low <clears throat> range for him. So it's easy for him to gravitate this way. Now, I can hold him by the collar, encourage him to drop or to release just by command, hold him by the collar, and you can be patient. Wait for the item to fall out of his mouth. If he is a long time in holding, you can pick up on the collar lightly just to make it a little bit harder to hang on to the item so he's encouraged to release so he can get better breath so he can have freedom in the collar and as soon as he releases the item now you give him the second item toss the second item so we're making a connection here between give up item one and you will get item two and they're of equal value to you so he's just as happy with one or two and we are going to associate give up the item that you have with give, release, drop, whatever term you want. And when he does drop, it is a big deal. Good boy, here's your toy. Much different than if he goes into my closet and pulls out a tennis shoe. This is not drop for another tennis shoe. This is not drop for good boy. This is correction with leash and training collar until you drop the item and then it's neutralized. It's, we leave it alone. We don't chastise him further. We don't praise him for dropping it. He's going to learn. Picking up tennis shoes, not fun, not stimulating. In fact, the only thing associated with picking up a tennis shoe is the negative leash and collar action. He said, I just soon pass that and go for something a little more positive, like my rope on my ball. And that's how we create the positive release, having nothing whatsoever to do with correction, truthfully. Now, when you give, you give just one command to drop it? Yes, very good point. One command, you... like our, our entire relationship is set up um, around, our entire relationship is set up around the first command response. So I don't want to build a habit around telling my dog, drop, drop, drop it now. Bowser, drop it, drop it. Good boy, drop, that's my boy. Because that all becomes necessary then to get him to respond. I would like one calm, clear drop. And I have the other item in waiting for him that he can see. I will hold his collar so that he can't run around and play. I've limited his options. I can pick up on the collar to make it a little bit more uncomfortable to hold the item. And now there's really nothing but wait here. This is dog training, waiting for him to make a decision. And when he decides, look at this other ball, collar being held, to let the item go one more time, I say drop, and I reward with the toy, the second rope bone, the good boys. So we're going to make this association between one word to drop, when the item falls out of your mouth, it's a positive thing, you're rewarded, and that's the pattern you'll see develop. One time, you say drop, he does, now we can have him go after the other ball, receive praise, whatever the case may be.